Lesson 10.3, Measure Time Intervals. We're going to be doing this mostly in minutes. So that would be less than an hour. A time interval is the amount of time between events. It's the amount of time that went by from the start to finish of an event. And Emma started watching a math video at 4 o'clock p.m. And she finished watching it at 4.12 p.m. The time interval for the length of the video was 12 minutes. It went from 4 o'clock to 4.12, so that was 12 minutes. Elapsed time is a time interval. It's the amount of time that goes by from the start of an activity to the finish of that activity. We can measure elapsed time in minutes. When we find the starting time, we use a number line, analog clock, or subtraction to count the minutes to the ending time. Lisa's family went to the Chicago Historical Museum and they saw a film about the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. The film began at 1.15 p.m. and ended at 1.47 p.m. How long did the film last? We need to use the start and end times to find the length of the film in minutes. We see it started at 1.15 p.m. It ended at 1.47 p.m. We can use a number line to find the elapsed time. We can skip count by fives beginning at the start time, then count on by ones to the end time. Our number line starts at 1.15 when the film began, and because it's a 15, we can skip count by fives, can't we? And our number line can show 120, 125, 130, 135, 140, 145, 150. We skip count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes. We need to get to 147, so we're going to count on one minute increments at a time. We get to 31, 32. So the film was 32 minutes long. We skip counted by fives, then we counted on by ones until we got to the end time. If the film began at 3.30 p.m. and ended at 4.02 p.m., we can find the elapsed time by skip counting by tens and counting on the ones. Because this is a multiple of 10, like 10, 20, 30, we can skip count by tens and then we'll count on to the end by ones. So we start at 3.30 on our number line, that's the time it started, and our number line is gonna to go to 3.40, 3.50, then it'll be four o'clock, then it'll be 4.10, so now we can skip count 10, 20, 30, we're at four o'clock, but we need to go to 4.02, so we go one, two, that puts us at 32. When the activity begins on a multiple of 10, we can start skip counting by tens. Then of course, we slowly add on the one at a time until we get to the end time, don't we? So our number line is gonna depend on what the start minutes are, okay? If it said 35, then we could skip count by increments of five, see? If the film began at 3.30 p.m., we can also jump 30 minutes. That's a half hour to 4 o'clock. When the minute hand finishes going around and it goes up to the 12, we'll be at 4 o'clock. That's a half hour. That's 30 minutes. So we can just jump 30 minutes, that half hour to 4 o'clock, then add the two remaining minutes to get to 4.02. And the 30 minutes plus the two little minutes long, it was 32 minutes long. We can use an analog clock to find elapsed time. The start time is 5.05 p.m. The end time is 5.37 p.m. We start at 5.05 because it's the minute hand's pointing on the one. So that's five minutes past five, isn't it? And we skip count by fives, 
So that's going to end up becoming our zero mark because that's five minutes. See? We skip count by fives and count on the ones until we get to 537. So starting here, the elapsed time would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, 32. So when it gets to 537 right here, the elapsed time would be 32 minutes. It's where the minute hand slowly moved around till it pointed to this little mark. We can use subtraction to find elapsed time. If our start time is 6.20 a.m. and our end time is 6.47 a.m., we put the end time as the minuend. See how it went up on top? Then the start time is the subtrahend. We do our subtraction. 7 take away 0 is 7. 4 take away 2 is 2. 6 take away 6 is 0. And we have 27 minutes. Just make sure to line up the hours and minutes in columns correctly and neatly. Okay? Now this one's a little trickier. The start time is 8.50 p.m. and the end time is 9.14 p.m. We put the end time as the minuend, 914. We put the start time as the subtrahend, the 850. But we can do 4 take away 0 is 4, but we can't have 1 take away 5. So we need to regroup and borrow from the hours. So the 9 hours is going to become an 8 hours. But each hour is 60 minutes. So if we take 60 minutes as an hour from here, we have to add 60 minutes to the minute side because there are 60 minutes in each hour. When we regrouped, we added 60 minutes to the minute side. So we have 14 minutes. If we add the 60 minutes as the hour we borrowed from the 9 and it became an 8, we now have 74 minutes. We have a 7 and a 4. See? Now we can do the subtraction and do 7 minus 5 is 2. So that's a little trickier. We're going to get into that more in fifth grade, but I just wanted to show you what would happen. And it might even be easier to do this using a number line. So let's talk about that a little bit more. A number line or a subtraction? Which method would be easier for you? Our start time is at 7.50 a.m. Our end time is at 8.07 a.m. We use a number line. We can start at 7.50 and do increments of 5 to 7.55, then 8 o'clock, then 8.05 to 8.10. And when we skip count by fives, 5, 10, 15, we're at 8.05 for 15 minutes. We need to get to 8.07. So we can count on one that's 16 minutes, and one more would be 17 minutes, and we'd be at 8.07. So we know 17 minutes elapsed. If we try do, doing it with subtraction, we put our end time as the minuen and our start time as the subtrahend, and we're back to like we had with the previous problem. We can do 7 take away 0 is 7, but now we have 0 minutes take away 5. We need to regroup from the hours, so we're going to cross off the 8 and make it a 7, and we're going to take the 60 minutes from that hour that we're borrowing, and we're going to give it to the minutes side. So we gave 60 minutes to the minutes side. We had 7 minutes. We borrowed 60 minutes as an hour. Now we have 67 minutes on the minutes side. And 6 take away 5 is 1. And we get 17 minutes, just like we did with the number line. So to subtract, we need to regroup one hour at 60 minutes to the minutes side first. We're going to learn more about this in fifth grade, but a number line may be easier to solve this problem right now for third grade. We can see the increments and not have to worry about regrouping. If you know how to regroup this and you understood this, well then good for you, you're ahead of the class. But if this is too difficult, don't worry about it. You're going to learn it in fifth grade. And finding elapsed time by using an analog clock or by using a number line are alike because we begin at the start time and count on for both. 
We can use one method to find the elapsed time and check our answer with the other method. If we use a number line and find our elapsed time, we can check it by using a drawing of an analog clock. If we find the elapsed time using an analog clock, we can check it using the number line. Emma started doing her math homework at quarter past three in the afternoon. She finished at quarter to four that same afternoon. How long did it take Emma to do her math homework? Well, remember that a clock can be split into quarters. This is a quarter after, this is a quarter to. A quarter after is a quarter past, and it's 5, 10, 15 minutes past the hour. So a quarter past 3, that's when she started, quarter past 3, that would be 3.15. The minute hand would be pointing to the 3, and that stands for 15 minutes. It would be 3.15 p.m. A quarter to is equal to 15 minutes to the hour, or before the hour. It's also 45 minutes past the hour. We can start at 12 as a zero and go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. It's not four o'clock yet, it's a quarter to four. So that means it's 15 minutes before four o'clock. So it's still in the threes, the hour is still in the threes. So a quarter to four would be 3.45 p.m. It's not four o'clock yet, so it's still in the threes. And if we skip count by fives going around, the nine is a 45, that's 345. So we have 345 for our end time using subtraction. Remember, the end time is the minuend. And we put 315 for our start time as the subtrahen. We do our subtraction and get 30 minutes elapsed. The clock was at 315 and five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes elapsed. So it took Emma 30 minutes to do her math homework. It's very important to write whether the time is a.m. or p.m. If a start time is in the a.m. and the end time is in the p.m., several hours may have elapsed. It might be a few minutes, like I'm going to show you in this example, but it also might be hours. If we start at 11.55 a.m. and go to 12.10 p.m., this is 11.55 a.m. It's not 12 o'clock yet, but it's almost. In five more minutes, it'll be 12 o'clock. And then it goes to 12.10. So we have 5, 10, 15 minutes. This is five minutes before noon at lunchtime. This is 10 minutes after noon at lunchtime. So the five minutes before noon and the 10 minutes after is 15 minutes elapsed. As the minute hand goes to the 12, the hour becomes 12 o'clock. It becomes 12 o'clock noon at lunchtime. And the time changes from a.m. to p.m. So we just have 15 little minutes that the minute hand moved. If we start at 11.55 p.m. and go to 12 12.10 p.m., this is five minutes before midnight this is 10 minutes after noon at lunchtime. So you have to be very careful when we're writing our time. We need to write a.m. or p.m. so we know how much time has elapsed and if we're counting nights or days. If we make a number line going from 5 minutes before midnight at 11.55 p.m., one hour would be 12.55 a.m. because now it's morning. We went from the middle of the night to now it's after midnight, so it's 12.55 a.m. So that would be one hour to 12.55, two hours to 1.55, and we just keep going to the 55 on the clock. So we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours to get back to 11.55 a.m. because the hour hand went around one full circle. It went around 12 hours. So it went from 11.55 p.m. to 11.55 a.m. We need to go to 12.10 p.m. Five more minutes, it's going to be 12 o'clock. It'll be 12 o'clock noon at lunchtime. See? 
Then another five minutes is 12.05, and another five minutes is 12.10 p.m. So we went 12 hours and 15 minutes. 12 hours and 15 minutes have elapsed because this says p.m. and that says p.m. Because this says a.m. and that says p.m., only 15 minutes elapsed. When we made it p.m. and p.m., the clock hand, the minute hand, had to go one full circle around the clock to go back to 11.55 a.m., and then we added on that 15 minutes. So we have 12 hours and 15 minutes that have elapsed. Be very careful and make sure you write a.m. or p.m. so it's not confusing whether you're talking about day or night. We can also list the time by minutes or hours. If our start time is 1.18 p.m. and our end time is 1.24 p.m., we can write 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124. We start here and we count one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. And it's the same thing as using a number line. We're just making it in a list going this way instead of writing it on a number line with little marks going this way. If our start time is 1.05 p.m. and our end time is 1.23 p.m., because that's a 5, we can skip count by 5s. And we can write our start time of 1.05, then write 110, 115, 120, 121, 122, 123. And when we skip count, we'll go 5, 10, 15, then 16, 17, 18 by 1s. We can see it's 18 minutes. But again, it's the same thing as using a number line and listing them horizontally with little marks with these minutes on it. If our start time is 1.05 p.m. and our end time is 3.07 p.m., we can even skip count by hours. We could start at 1.05 and go to 2.05, then 3.05, 3.06, 3.07, see? Then we would have one hours, two hours, then one minute, two minutes. So it would be two hours and two minutes. So we could skip count by hours even and making it a list. But again, it's the same thing as making a horizontal number line and putting the marks and writing these times there, okay? So we can measure elapsed time in minutes using the starting time. We can use a number line, an analog clock, or a subtraction to count the minutes to the ending time. I'm going to continue talking about time, and we're going to use time intervals in the next lesson, and I'll show you how to find a start or end time by using elapsed time, and I hope I'll see you there. Keep trying hard. I'm proud of you. Bye.